So one of my favorite things is to be able to trade oversold reversals. I like to buy the dip on a stock that is overall long-term bullish, and I like to buy into that dip if it begins to indicate signs of recovery. With that being said, how can you scan for something like this? Uh, let me go ahead and just jump right into it. Again, you don't have to use this trading platform if you don't want to, it is available in the US. And if you want to download it right now, you can use my fifth link in the description down below. And it's called Weeble. They have this little uh, screener, uh, as you, you can call it. And pretty much what I have set up is, you know, six different filters. Um, you can see that the market cap was one of the filters, the region was one of the filters. And then I look for a 4% drop or more in the overall uh, market. Yeah, and then uh, very quickly, this list pops up. It shows a total of 16 matches based off of the criteria that I set up for myself. And then when it comes down to actually wanting, uh, wanting to perform an analysis, I just double click. It populates into its own little watch list. Uh, and then I can kind of go down the list. Remember, I'm trying to buy the dip on a stock that is bullish long term, not a stock that continues to sell off. Um, and this, this is the part that's really important because if the stock is already bearish, kind of like this one, and then it dips, do I really want to buy into that? Probably not, right? SBSW, uh, consistent descending pattern, lower highs, lower lows, doesn't meet my criteria. So yes, it might have sold off, but if this stock is something that consistently sells off, then why would I want to buy into it, right? So this thing saw a 10% drop, consistent lower highs and lower lows, wouldn't meet my criteria. This one, all right, let's go ahead and look into it a little bit more. Okay, so this one on the day chart, we can see that it's showing signs of higher highs and higher lows, a little bit more on the bullish side. At least it meets a little bit more of my criteria. When looking at the week chart, I can see that it has a history of selling off. It rallies, it sells off, it rallies, it sells off, it rallies. It's very, very overbought. Uh, but, you know, at least at that point, it meets somewhat of my criteria. It looks like it has a history of pulling on back and then it recovers. These reversals are essentially what I like to focus on. Direction is in my favor. I can buy into the dips. And then when it begins to indicate signs of recovery, I can add more to my position and sell back at previous highs. I love trading reversals. Remember, that's my trading style. It doesn't have to be yours. I'm just explaining to you on how I can find these stocks by simply setting up a screener to scan for them. Same thing. It sold off. Um, you know, became oversold. It's still bullish long term. You wait for confirmation or reversal. We talk about that in the LPP lesson library. You wait for that confirmation, add more to your position size, and then sell back at previous size. It sold off, found its support, reversed back up, another reversal. Now it's pulling on back. It's testing lows of $9. It hit previous lows of $8.40. So there's no reason to buy into something that is actively selling off, but actually buy when it's indicating signs of a recovery. And that's one of the things that we talk about in the three stages of a reversal. Uh, now we have Ulta. Ulta strong descending pattern wouldn't meet my criteria. And this is the really fun part about this is that I can quickly just go down the list um, and see if it would meet any of my criteria. I can see right off the bat, this is a pharmaceutical company, very low volume. It looks like a pump and dump. Wouldn't be something that I want to trade. Would not be something that I would want to trade. This one's kind of trading sideways. Let me look at the larger time frame. Strong descending pattern. I would completely want to stay away from that. When it comes down to this one, strong descending pattern. I want to stay away from it. Um, this one's a little bit more on the bullish side, but it has very, very low volume. So I'm not too sure if this would be something that would meet my criteria. No, definitely not. I can see right off the bat, it has extremely low volume. So because of that, it's just not going to be something that I would feel comfortable trading. And again, just because I don't feel comfortable trading it doesn't mean that you shouldn't. I'm just explaining to you why I'm choosing not to. Uh, and then when we go down the list, you can see that volume um, gets lower and lower. So overall, uh, the only one out of all the stocks that I scanned for based off of the screener that I set up, the only one that actually met any of my criteria um, is H, uh, what was it? H M Y. And it recently pulled on back. It's a little bit more on the bullish side of thing, at least for the past, um, what is it? Four to five months. Let's see when it began to indicate signs of an uptrend. No, this is actually, it's been bullish since, uh, mid to late 2022 with the higher highs and higher lows. So it definitely has a history of a nice little uptrend, a nice little pullback. But then again, just because it's pulling on back doesn't mean that I have to blindly buy into it. I still want to wait for indication of a support, indication of a reversal, and then confirmation of higher highs and higher lows. I would rather be late to a rally than early to a sell-off, right? Because I could buy it here, but then what about if in a few weeks it's back down to $8.50? What's the point of buying the dip if the dip keeps dipping, right? Just wanted to share with you um, a quick little breakdown on how you can screen for different stocks, especially for those that are just getting started in the market now. One thing that I do want to remind you, especially for complete beginners, I wouldn't always recommend to always feeling the need to scan for stocks. 
The reason I say that is I think it's very useful to become familiar with the stocks that you choose to trade with um, or trade often. This is why I have kind of my bread and butter. And the more familiar that you become with these stocks, um, the more aware you are of the different factors that influence positively and negatively for that given stock. So just something to take into consideration. Remember, I talk about this in so much more detail in our LPP lesson library, and I trade live every single morning. I don't just talk about what it is that I do. I do it live in front of our LPP members every single morning right at market open. If you're ready to sign up and watch me trade live as soon as Tuesday when the market opens in observance to Labor Day, market will be closed on Monday. But if you're ready to sign up, again, it's going to be the second link in the description down below, and I'll see you there for our live trading session. Like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take care, team.